According to the World Health Organization, one billion people suffer from some sort of mental illness, and 75% of them never get the help they need. The COVID-19 pandemic has only exacerbated the problem. This year's World Mental Health Day addresses this global issue, and in conjunction with the 40 Days Safe Cities International Campaign, our next guest has been selected to present his Newark-based film project, Combating Suicide. Joining us this afternoon is film director Jesus R. Very nice to meet you. Oh, it's an absolute pleasure. Thank, thank you for having me on the show. Now, reading all this information, and I teased you before the interview started, uh, that you a uh, man with a whole lot of jobs. I should say a whole lot of talents, right? But I've heard you describe yourself as a social impact activist. Talk to me about what that means to you. Yeah, I, I think that, uh, especially in film, because we are influenced so much by media uh, and, and all the arts, it, you know, the, the media and, and culture define um, how we identify ourselves and how we, we see each other in society. And I feel like it's especially important for filmmakers that they're better stewards of the narratives that they're creating that we identify with. And because of my beginnings in, in my, my career, um, having started from adversity, I've always found it important to implement social impact in, into all the messaging that I do, whether it's music videos, commercials, films, uh, any content that I create, I feel like should be helping humanity. And it, and you know, you talk about your beginnings and uh, let you were 22 years old. You were shot at 22 times. Um, so you've said that your success has come from that survival. Coming first of all, why were you shot at 22 times? I don't want to get into that, but I, I was I was doing the the wrong things and living the okay. had the wrong type of energy and the wrong lifestyle and and I guess you know you you attract that energy when when you're involved in certain elements. But for me, um, I, I felt it was very divine in in the, the numbers, if you will. I was 22, 22 shots. It was two twenty two in the morning. I still have a twenty two slug in my stomach, although I was hit by a nine and a forty five, but for me, it, 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 one, it was, it was miraculous that I survived. And yes. th then I saw a greater purpose in, in my life. Um, so did you, can I ask you that greater purpose? Wh where did you get that message? You know, you talk about wanting to have that impact now socially. And I hope, you know, on other people, perhaps young people going the wrong direction or some young person without a direction. What was it that you saw, heard, or felt that led you down a different path? Well, I think, um, you know, I've always wrestled with this idea of, 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 am I a product of my environment? Because people come from same, similar circumstances and, uh, you know, they, they suffer worse fates and some, you know, very few make it out and they're able to change their lives and, and, and um, you know, turn things around. And what I ultimately realized is that I am a, a product of my circumstances, or my, I'm a product of my environment because there's certain things today that define um, me in terms of my resilience and perseverance and, and work ethic and, and you know, tenacity to survive and excel, but nobody says you can't change your environment. And your environment doesn't have to be geographically. Your environment can be your social circle. Your environment can be the, the content that you consume, that you um, that influences your mind. You know, you're the sum of all the thoughts that you have in a day. So everything that influences you, um, it affects you. You know, some people don't don't, don't want to you know give it that much credit, but it ultimately does. You know, from when you're a child watching cartoons to the music you listen to all day, this this programs and conditions yeah. what our social norms are and how we should treat each other. Now you've got a pretty big event coming up here. Um, uh, you have been invited to the UN because you are working on a film, Suicide Saint, that really deals with that issue and some of the mental health issues that, that we are dealing with today. Talk to me a little bit about how it is that this came to be something that uh, was important uh, to you to get on film um, and, and share. Sure. Well, uh, I would say that I, I have an ongoing relationship with the United Nations. About a decade ago, I was 
selected by the UN to represent the US to 34 countries in the Western Hemisphere. And we created toolkits on how to utilize arts for violence prevention. So when they found out I was doing this film, Suicide Saint, to address mental health, they wanted it to be a highlight in their 40 Days Safer Cities program. So again, you know, I'm the only organization representing the US uh, to the rest of the world. Uh, and we're a leading uh, world solution in terms of how we're utilizing arts to impact society. And I think it's very important that the UN has recently changed their mandate and how they approach safer cities to be defined less about policing and more about arts and opportunity that we provide in our communities. And so Suicide Saints, you're focusing on mental health issues. Why is this something that's, uh, why was this a subject matter you felt needed the tr this treatment on film? Well, the more I researched and, and understood the, the, the issue, the more alarming it became and, and the more shocked I was that there wasn't more being done about it. And throughout my entire career from doing Guns for Cameras, from being honored by two presidents and all, all the work that I've done in, in, in social impact, I've, I've realized that mental health is the derivative of every other issue that we face in society. From every interaction, every thought that we have throughout our day is impacted by our, our mental stability, right? Our, the, our ability to um, un understand the world, how we perceive things, our emotional engagement with, with coworkers, with friends, with loved ones. Every moment we have is influenced by our health. And for illness itself, you know, for people who have severe illness, it, it's constantly getting worse and that numbers are going higher. But even people without illness that are just suffering depression, anxiety, um, you know, suicide rates have increased 30% over the last two decades. And even more for, for children, children from 10 to 17, suicide rates have increased 70%. So the numbers are, in, uh, I, yeah, it's, I, it's hard to articulate how yeah. bad the issue is and then how much people aren't uh, addressing it. And you're hoping your film will uh, be a window for uh, uh, people to see um, other people like themselves dealing with issue and uh, with dealing with issue and uh, also maybe allow them to think about it and perhaps do something about it. Oh, absolutely. You know, we're, we're hoping this little indie art film saves humanity. We, we live in, in a world divided. Uh, we're so polarized by, by politics and, and, you know, even our perception of, of health and science. We're, we're so indifferent about um, all, all these different things. There's so much misinformation that I think it, it's, it's important that we, for this film, we want to people to be able to relate to the characters and it's more of a visually immersive experience, not just a dynamic storyline and these interesting characters, but uh, really pulls people into what um, it feels like to, to deal with schizophrenia and PTSD and the different disorders that the characters are dealing with. And this is personal. I, I understand it's also personal with you. You've, you've had some experience with people that have, have taken their own lives, relatives. Yes, I've have close, very close family members who've committed suicide, um, and and you know this. I, I don't know anybody that this doesn't affect. Uh, in the U.S., half of, of the population, forty six percent of adults, deal with mental illness at some point in their life. So if you're not directly affected by, you know, indirectly, there's there's somebody close to you that you've known as, as suffering, or maybe you don't know, and, and that's why it's important. Hopefully, if you're watching this that you, you know, check in on your, on your loved ones and your, and your friends and your family members. Uh, I think with, you know, this pandemic and everything that's going on, uh, 2020 has been a very rough year for a lot of people. Yeah. And you are going to, my understand, before we leave here, you're going to be shooting this production around Newark. Yes. Uh, and to find out more information, we can go to JesusR.com. You can go to JesusR.com or uh, I'm on social media, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, uh, all at JesusR, H-E-Z-U-E-S-R. It's been a pleasure talking with you. And honestly, I can't wait to see what you do next. It is, I applaud you for your commitment. Thank you so, so much. It's been a pleasure to be on your show. And when we premiere next year, I'd love to come back. Hey, it would be terrific. That would be great. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much. Here and now will be right